Hey everybody, today I didn't plan to film, but I got sort of dressed while I put makeup on to make a TikTok, so I figured I would film while I'm at it. If you wanna see the TikTok, here it is. So you got sober, or you're considering getting sober. Good job. Now every time you go to a friend's or family member's house, all they have to offer you is apple juice and water. You're lucky if there is a diet soda on hand, or maybe even a flavored seltzer not sponsored. I hate it here. Guys, you have other options. So many other options. Welcome to the world of non-alcoholic or NA, not like the program, beverages. I'll be your guide during this time in the video where we'll talk about why you should consider upping your NA beverage game. Let me first point out that I just threw in the word craft for SEO purposes and because technically, technically, every beverage in sobriety is non-alcoholic. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how incorporating NA beverages, kind of like fun, spunky little ones, into my sobriety has been helpful, and dare I say, exciting. The benefits of exploring the world of NA drinks, and at the end, a little tip for you to find out your perfect NA beverage. So stick around to the very end, or else. Hey everyone, I'm Allie K. Campbell. You can call me Allie. This is my YouTube channel. It is dedicated to getting real, having fun, and of course, living sober. This channel was formerly known as Young, Dumb, and Sober. I am still two of those three things. I'll let you figure out which. Not sure how you found yourself in this dry little corner of the internet. However, I am glad you're here. Maybe you're into getting real, having fun, and living sober too. We should be friends. Every Wednesday, I post a sobriety tip as a part of my sobriety toolbox series. If you want to receive a new sobriety tip every Wednesday, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. And if you also want to get notifications about any time I upload a new video, you should go ahead and click the notification button. It is a little bell. I'll hit that bell and you will get updated every time I put up a new video. It's also great motivation for me to keep creating content. The more that the subscribers rises, <laughs> the more likely I am to know that these videos are actually bringing value to other people. Once upon a time, I was in early sobriety. Some might say I'm still in early sobriety. It's been over three years, but I like to keep a beginner's mindset. While I do feel confident in my desire to stay alcohol and drug free, I make a conscious effort to not ever get to the point where I feel like I got this because overconfidence and me don't mix. So anyway, during my first few months and really my first year of sobriety, I stayed away from any NA beverages that simulated or resembled alcohol in any way, shape, or form, other than the fact that it was liquid. I didn't try out any near beers. I didn't even have any mocktails, really. It all just kind of felt a little bit too close for comfort at that point in my sobriety. It didn't feel strong enough for me to even like test those waters. With more time, I got super comfortable with those things, and now they're no longer a threat to my sobriety in any way. But like I said, it took a little while. So if you're not at the point where you feel like you can have a near beer or even like a mocktail, Tail, then like that's okay like maybe you'll get there maybe you won't it's not the end of the world there's plenty of other options like we'll also talk about in the video during that time I got super obsessed with energy drinks which is not great yeah in fact I made a whole review series about them this is better all right if you don't know what I mean when I'm explaining that it's because I've explained it in an idiotic way I'll show you and I'll do it in an idiotic way too I'm really nervous actually I'm very uncoordinated I'm okay so I'm supposed to drink it Swallow the drink while I'm... What the fuck? <sighs> I did it. My eyes are watering. Okay, I have to go. I have to go. All right, so I'm gonna leave now. Bang! So if you wanna go check out those old videos, you can go ahead and do that. So it seems like the world and the internet fell in love with seltzer. We all fell in love with seltzer around 2018. It's now 2020 and the love for seltzer is just like getting bigger and bigger and bigger in and out of the alcohol free community. White Claw, any kind of hard seltzer, like all those alcohol companies are making their own versions of White Claw. Seltzer is on the rise for whatever reason. I mean, it's just water with a little fizz, so you can't really go wrong. I guess I understand why it's so popular. There's also a ton of brands and options to choose from, different flavors. And if you're in a sober circle, you might even get in a little feisty debate about which is the best one. If you've chosen sobriety because you have a substance abuse issue, or you suspect you might have a substance abuse issue, my advice is to lay off the near beers 
and anything that gives you the feeling that you're having a real cocktail for at least a little while. Like maybe even lay off energy drinks for a little while, honestly, like especially if you are like kind of like a stimulant abuser or you're super sensitive to stimulants, energy drinks might not be the best, uh, the best option either. And like that seems to be something that's like very common in recovery and sobriety circles. Like you ever look outside of an AA or an NA meeting, people are out there with Red Bulls and monsters and I'm no different, I'm the same exact way. So no judgment or no shame or whatever, but it's not always the best thing, especially if you experience like a lot of anxiety. There are other options that might be better for you, like tea, for example. It's still caffeinated, but it's not as caffeinated, and it's certainly more natural than an energy drink. And there's also like a whole f world of teas that you can explore too. But at the end of the day, like you know you better than I know you, and you have to, you know, choose what's right for you and your own particular path. Throwing myself through the world of any beverages was kind of a game changer for my sobriety because it added a level of excitement to my daily routine. I used to get pretty excited about trying new alcoholic beverages when I was still drinking and stuff, but not really. I was more so just concerned with getting f***ed up. Now I kind of can appreciate tastes and find like my favorite drink and I don't know, it's cute, it's fun, maybe I'm just weird. But I do want to go through the benefits of any beverages and sobriety with you guys so that you have a better idea of why it might be helpful for you. So the first benefit of exploring the world of any beverages while you're getting sober is that it replaces old memory. So a big part of getting and staying sober for a lot of people is building new memories, specifically positive new memories. Like, I don't know about you guys, but pretty much any time I went to a party or any event that involved alcohol, something bad happened. Not to mention partying and socializing was always going hand in hand with alcohol for me. So in order to build new positive positive memories around things like parties and other social gatherings, I have to build positive sober memories with other drinks. You start looking at social after a while, after doing it for a little bit, you start, you stop connecting socializing with alcohol and you start connecting socializing with something else. Whether or not that's gonna be like NA beverages for you is, is really up to you. For me, it was a big part of it because I did really like lean into the idea of having fun with trying a new non-alcoholic beer or getting like a virgin mojito or a virgin Bloody Mary and things like that. Like it was um, something to look forward to. Now I can connect socializing to that sort of thing on top of like any emotional stuff, like actually spending time with people who are there, like enjoying myself and being mindful. All of those positive memories attached to socializing versus all of those negative ones that came with drinking is a really good way to kind of reset your mind. Non-alcoholic beverages help you feel less left out. This again goes hand in hand with like social situations and maybe you're not the type of person to ever feel left out. If so, more power to you. You have some serious confidence, my friend. I have always been a little bit sensitive to that kind of thing. Not so much anymore, but tended to be worried about what people were thinking about me and if they were looking at me and if they were talking about me and all this other stuff. Wow. What any beverages have helped me do is feel like I'm part of the crowd. Feel not necessarily like I'm drinking, but like I'm not sticking out like a sore thumb. And it's also a really good way to negate any comments that you get from people who are stupid and come up and say things like, hey, why aren't you drinking? Ridiculous things like that might very well happen. And when you just have a drink in your hand, it feels better than it is to just be like empty handed or like sipping on a juice box. Bring your own stuff when you go to parties. So the number three benefit of NA beverages is something that I brought up before. It's fun and it's an exciting little thing to explore. Like in sobriety, I found different topics within the world that I just kind of got to like dive into, really become a part of, find out what I like the most. NA beverages happen to be one of them. It took me a little while till I started uh, looking at non-alcoholic beers, and then I started doing a series about them. You can see all my reviews with Petra on there. But once I did it, now I, I, I really look forward to having them, not in an unhealthy way, and I never have more than one because I just don't have that desire to, but it's fun. And I really like looking up like new mocktail recipes or ordering one when I'm out to dinner with my parents, a nice little treat. I really don't have any other way to explain it other than it's like a cute, nice little treat that you can do for yourself. Okay, so it's basically the end of the episode, meaning it is time for my tip to help you find the best non-alcoholic beverage 
for you. First, I would definitely take discretion based on like where your sobriety is at, how long you've been sober, what your history is. If you have a network of sober people that you speak with regularly or you go to meetings or anything like that, definitely, you know, seek counsel when it comes to uh, drinking any kind of like non-alcoholic beers or um, mocktails. It's not worth risking. But moving right along, my tip for this is you make a quick list and I love lists. If you've watched any of my other episodes, Pretty much like all of my tips involve me telling you to make a list of some sort. That's just like the way that my brain works. But make a list of like all of your favorite flavors and then kind of like make a game out of it by looking up different types of recipes for drinks that might excite you or that you think sounds really good or really delicious. At the very least, you can get, you can just find an already made drink that has that particular flavor, but try to do something a little bit, one that you don't necessarily do all the time because you wanna have that feeling of novelty in it. That's part of the fun of it. So then if we're ever allowed out of the house again, you'll have a go-to drink for when you're going to all the parties that you're invited to because I know you're super popular. Okay, my sober, sober curious, and everyone in between friends, that's your tip for this week. If you like it, add it to your sobriety toolbox. If you don't like it, f off. I'm just kidding. Subscribe to this channel for more sobriety related content. Hit the bell if you'd like to get notifications every time I upload new content. And it's been real, it's been fun, and it's been real fun.